Good morning. Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. Uh, Mom and I are going to come out here and make a video this morning before classes start. Um, so the last video I did, we had Sweet Jane here out, and we started talking about her training and how we were bringing her from a horse that wasn't very positive on a path to something that was um, profitable and something that was trustworthy and something that was honest and even likable. And so she's coming along. And she still got issues. This morning when I brought her out, went to put her on the hitching post to put a saddle on her. She she pulled back before I got it hitched. So I just bumped her backwards about 20 feet across the yard and brought her up and tried again. And we'd do that about three times. Bump her across, she'd pull back. So before her feet stopped moving, i just make her keep going back about 20 or 30 feet. And then walk her up and give her the choice. About the third time she's like, okay. I got it. So she just stood there. So she's not, she's not all there yet. But I want to show you some of the stuff, the process we're going through. I think she's a real good um, example here because she's not a finished horse. And a lot of times, what horse trainers will do when they show you what to do with a horse is they'll get a finished horse. Uh, they'll get a horse that acts perfectly, and so. You, on the video they do everything perfect and your horse don't do that and so it gets kind of frustrating so she may not be perfect this morning uh, we'll see what we got so anyhow what we're going to talk about this morning is bidding see how she just she's still just kind of jumpy she's this is a nervous she's she's not nervous but she's sensitive she picks up everything and that's going to come into play here in a minute okay um <clears throat> A lot of people have trouble, a lot of you out there that are having some trouble with your horse, you're having trouble with your horse uh, with the communication. And I know this is true because this is what most people have trouble with. Um, what you want is you, you want to be able to get on your horse and maybe you just want to move over there, but your horse takes nine steps that way in a semi-circle, prances around, comes back over here, and, and it's like it takes you forever. It's like... Um, Billy on the Family Circus. Remember the Family Circus Sunday cartoon? And Mama says, go to the neighbor and borrow me a cup of sugar. And so he goes through the backyard, you know, over the swing set, across the fence, through the yard, grabs on a bicycle, goes all the way around the block, <clears throat> you know, and, and climbs trees and everything, and finally gets to the neighbors and gets the sugar and takes the long way back. And Mama's like, where you been? I went next door. Just took the long way around. Well, a lot of times our horse seems like everything we want our horse to do, they do 10 times as many steps as we want, and they take the long way around. And uh, so I want to help you work on that today. So now we're going to do some communication with the bit. You're going to stand there and go to sleep on me? Hmm? Now I'm going to show you the gear that I'm using, what I'm using today. All right? Now, the head stall is... Uh, Mama, if you can come in a little close on that. The head stall is by Buckaroo Leather, which exclusively, he makes all my stuff. Um, he uses the best quality leather, and the workmanship is, is a second to none. And uh, so I like this one. I had him make this one for me. I like the buckles down here with the bits because I'm working a lot of different horses, and I can just... Um, unbuckle and just change my bits out so I have several different bits and I'll have split reins I'll have Macantes and I'll have the bits set up and if someone has a, a horse and their head stall that horse has its head stall and they're using it but I've got split reins on there about go to sleep on me there sweetheart and, uh, but they're having trouble with that, then it's easier for me to just swap the bit with the slobber straps and Makate and everything on it. Uh, so this is a setup I like. Um, again, this is Buckaroo Leather, John Brand. I've got probably six of his head stalls, and, uh, and I love it. Now the bit I'm using is, uh, this is a Jeremiah Watt Egg Butt, egg butt Snaffle. And uh, so, it's a good heavy bit. When you get a snaffle bit, 
Tell you what I'm gonna do. She's fat. And uh, the pockets on her shoulder are kind of filled in with fat. So I gotta cinch her up kind of tighter. This saddle rolls. And I'm wondering if she's just, she's bothered. We're just standing here and that cinch is kind of tight. I'll tighten it back up for her when I go to ride. I'll give her a little breathing room. There you go, baby. How about that? Okay? So it's a Jeremiah Watt egg butt snaffle bit. And uh, the thing about these, it's uh, sweet iron, which the horses really like. It's got, uh, you probably can't see it through there. It's got inlaid copper in here, which helps promote salivation for the horse. But the number one thing about these good quality bits is they're heavy. If you go to Tractor Supply and get a $30 bit, snaffle bit from tractor supply and hold one of these the difference in the weight is very very noticeable um you want a heavier bit you want a heavier head stall you want heavy on your horses okay with heavy when i give a signal they can feel it the bit's heavy enough that uh they can carry it in their mouth and when i give a signal it's very definite you get a super lightweight head stall and a super lightweight bit, and then just a pair of nylon, no, pair of nylon uh, rope or reins, and it doesn't weigh anything. And I know it's hard to tell and hard to understand, but it makes it harder on the horse. We've had horses come through here that were just, they were broke horses, you could ride them, but they just weren't really ever in tune with the rider. Uh, they weren't ever really just calm and clear. And all I did was say, hey man, with your permission, can I try something? And I put a heavier head stall and a heavier snaffle bit. They were snaffle bit horses. Put a heavier snaffle bit. That's all I did and it made all the difference in the world. It made all the difference. It's like the signals were clear and the horse was like, huh. Now I don't have to worry and wonder about what he's trying to say. Now I know what's going on. Better stuff is more expensive. Okay, but keep this in mind, all right? Frugal, frugal is a positive character trait. Cheap is not, all right? Frugal is good, cheap is not. Where are you going, baby doll? Frugal is you don't spend money on things you don't need. Cheap is you spend as little money as you can get away with on things that you do need, all right? So now I use a brow band head stall. I don't use a split ear or one ear. I use a brow band. It's not so much, so much of your horsemanship is your state of mind. It's your view, it's how you approach it, okay? And sometimes you gotta make little adjustments. You gotta make little adjustments to keep yourself in that state of mind. Now the state of mind, one of the states of mind that we need with our horse is balance. We need to be balanced. We need to ride balance. Our horse needs to be balanced. This is balanced. And to me it's just a state of mind. When I put this and then I've got one loop and I just stick one ear through one loop, it's just not balanced. It's not the view of things, okay? And the other thing is here is I've got the makate I have on this is horsehair. Now the reason for the horsehair makate is it's kind of scratchy um, and so it's very definite and clear when I go to lay the rein on her neck and as I'm working with her now for her neck reining, she feels it. So again, the, the communications are clear and direct, all right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rope halter off of her, tip her nose around before it comes off. Drop that off and I'm just gonna hook it here around her neck. Now one of the rules we have here on the place, anything you do with the horse's head, anything you do with the horse's head, your horse is never tied up. So we always, regardless, we always untie the lead rope from the hitching post and just put this around their neck. So if you get one that says, I think I'm gonna walk off, you do have a handle, all right? I'm gonna come in here. This is amazing that 
she's at this point now because it was when we first got her she was just it was a huge fight to take the bit but with calmness with calmness patience and respect it's not a fight now okay when you're putting the head stall on off ear outside ear forward don't fold the ear forward and then near ear forward brow band over head stall over don't pull it back and don't come the ear back and pull it over because then you got to pull the bit so far and so hard up in the horse's mouth to get this far back to get over the ear okay all right now you see that little head pop there i want you to pay attention to that and keep that in mind okay because that is a that is a, an indicator one of the things here that we hammer all the time is horsemanship is about communication not just you committing communicating to your horse but always listen to what your horse is communicating to you all right now she's always communicating so we're going to work on some bit work this morning and we're going to show you what you can work on to get your horse to where they don't take 120 steps to move six feet you want that oh it's okay. there you go mama's looking out for me all right, sister, we're gonna we're gonna tighten you back up here. I know, I know. So she got fat as a butterball on the pasture, and I've got her separated out in here. Got her on a diet, trying to help a little bit. We put four saddles on her. This is the only one that even remotely fits her. So we're gonna turn around here a little bit. Now I try to let that saddle a little bit looser than I would. Maybe it won't roll when I go to get on, okay? So you take your Makate. I'm just going to tie it up here out of the way. Now, before I get on, what am I looking for when I go to get on? I don't want her to move her feet. So that's the first step, okay? Now she's standing pretty square. She's a little horse. Uh, I'm 185 pounds and so if your horse is standing like this or standing like this take them and square them up a little bit before you get on especially a younger horse um, a horse that you're training and working on okay face forward not facing her like this not jamming the toe of my boot in the ribs I have the rein her nose is tipped in a little bit facing forward go up and get on uh, I wondered if that wasn't going to do that. All right, baby. Now I'm going to have to tighten this saddle a little tighter than she would prefer. Those pockets I talk about that the bar your saddle goes and fits in, hers are full of fat. Okay? And so there's the saddle won't. She doesn't have real high withers. But I'm, I gotta tighten it, but I'm gonna be respectful. I know. This is where you get horses that start popping around and snapping at you. Cause you do what you gotta do, but you don't have to be quick and hard and disrespectful about it. We want our horses to respect us, but we don't go to the effort to respect them. We don't go to the effort to find out what they find disrespectful, okay? All right, girl. There we go. I'm gonna bring her up here just a little bit, just to get her off that incline. Now she stood there and let me get on and she didn't move her feet. That's a big plus for her, okay? Now, divide your horse up into three zones. All right. From the tip of his nose to the end of his neck right here, roughly is zone one. From here to the middle of his barrel is zone two. From the middle of his barrel to his tail is zone three. Start focusing on controlling the zones. No, no, okay. So now I wanna concentrate on zone one. I want her head, ooh, big old horse fly back there. 
I want her head, but I don't want her feet. So now I'm gonna come in here. Now she's shifted her feet, so she's like, I need to give to that pressure. There wasn't any pressure there. Always mind your horse. This is a very sensitive horse. Can't boss this horse around like a tank makes me do. You got to be light and easy with her. Okay? All right. So now when she started to move her feet, I released. Now, my legs are incredibly still. I'm not moving my legs or my feet at all. Okay? Come here. She's looking at them other horses. Come here. My legs are very still and my hands are very light. I don't want to send any signal to her. She's trying to find the relief. I'm gonna come out here a little bit more. There it is. Now she is, and we've known, we've noticed from the start, she's very reluctant to go to her right. She doesn't, she's a way easier to the left. Now see, I don't want her feet to move. And she don't know this is what we're doing. This is what you got to teach your horse. And your horse doesn't know because you haven't known. All right? I don't want her to move her feet. She's fresh this morning. She's like, well, are we going to go? Are we going to want? So I'm just going to keep working with her. After a little bit. Give me a little bit more. She's, you may not can tell from right there, but she's, there we go. She's kind of holding on it. But I released, so I, I only did enough to get her nose. Okay, that's important. Don't ask so much. If you're asking, okay, I'm just going to take that. She gave to the bit. Now, if I ask more, she's going to move her feet. So what I'm trying to get her to do is to understand that if my legs aren't moving, all I want is your face. There you go. Okay, so then I catch her before her feet. She was trying to come around. Now. I'm gonna show this right here. Now see, she's not acting perfect because I'm not trying to show you with a full broke horse. So now I'm coming in, I'm asking her to tip her nose. Now my legs are still, okay? My legs are still. So when I get her nose, now I'm gonna come back up here and just give a little energy with my legs, okay? Let's come back forward. Whoop. My legs are still. I'm asking for her nose, just her nose. All I want is zone one. All I want is zone one. My hands give me zone one. Now I'm gonna do some legs when her nose is tipped in. And I'm gonna go back. Now I got her feet, okay? Zone one and two. So if you want your horse to quit moving so much unnecessarily, Quit signaling so much, unnecessary. Teach them. My hands means I just want your head. Okay, now she knows what I'm gonna do. She's starting to learn this moving a little bit. So I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna come over here. And I'm gonna come with this leg. See her swing her butt around, tip her head in. Now, normally, I mean, it's a snaffle bit. We're gonna ride with two hands. I was just showing you the advantages we can get, all right? So zone one, zone one, and then my leg, zone three. I want that butt around, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tip her nose this way with my hands, zone one. Then I'm gonna use my leg to move zone three, okay? I'm gonna break them down and keep them separated. Zone one, zone three. Now, for you tender souls out there, yes, I'm wearing spurs, but if you'll watch, I have not touched her with the spurs. All right? I'm just using the calf of my leg. I ride the spurs, stay on my boots. I ride them if I need them. I've got them. But if I don't need them, I don't use them. All right? Uh, just because you see somebody wearing spurs don't mean that they're raking hair. Okay? So we're going to come back. Zone one. And then the legs. Now, your horse, you need to communicate with your horse. You can't say this is how Dwayne communicates with his. Sometimes you've got to whisper, all right? With this mare, I've got to whisper. I can't come in heavy in her face. Can't come in heavy in her face. She'll start popping that head. And I, I don't, see, I don't want that head popping right there. 
So I'm just, I am so feather light on her. And she's picking it up. She's doing better. Okay? All right. Just a little bit to help you on separating out your commute your cues and your communication okay um, your horse is doing too much in part because you're saying too much you're talking too much with your hands with your legs with your seat with your body and you haven't taught your horse to break down the communication but simplify everything down zone one zone two zone three zone two I usually save to the last when I'm teaching the horse that's bringing the forehand across all right, it's easier for them because where the nose goes, where the head goes, the body will follow. So it's naturally easy for them if you work with them to give the head and then use the leg, the butt to go around. That's natural. So it's easier for them, for me, to teach them to give the head, give the butt, and then after they get that clear and they're really got a handle on the whole what the leg thing means, then I start moving the forehand across independently. Okay? So, um simplify just simplify be clear be frugal and don't be cheap all right if it's worth doing it's worth doing right if the gear's worth having it's worth having good gear if your horse is worth riding she's worth taking the time to develop a communication between the two of you if she's worth you getting training for her then she's worth you getting training for you okay all right hope this helps you all a little bit and uh, we'll catch you next time.